Hello friends, today we will discuss railway turnout and railway turnout works with the help of points and crossing. Now this is a pair of point here and this is the crossing and combination of one pair of point and one crossing makes a turnout. Turnouts are used to transfer the railway vehicle from one track to another track. This is the main line and if you want to divert the traffic or the railway vehicle from main line to the branch line then this kind of arrangement is used. A turnout can be either a left hand turnout for example in this case or a right hand turnout depending upon whether the train is being diverted to the left side of the main line or towards the right side of the main line. Turnout is the arrangement of points and crossing with lead rails and they are used to divert a railway vehicle from one track to another track. It is a mechanical device that is used to guide the trains from one rail track to another rail and it consists of a pair of switch, this is called the switch, four lead rails and a crossing. This is the complete detail of a turnout. It has four lead rails, outer straight lead rail, inner straight lead rail, outer curve lead rail and inner curve lead rail. It has two stock rail. This is the stock rail 1 and stock rail 2. Two tongue rails. This is one tongue rail or switch rail, another tongue rail or switch rail. Now this switch rail makes the switch. This is the top of the switch and this is the heel of the switch. This is the crossing. Crossing is made when two rails cross each other with a small gap here and this gap is to be crossed by the wheel flange. This rail is flared and it is called wing rail. Another rail is also flared and this is called wing rail. This is the angle of crossing. This is the point rail and this is the splice rail. Now just to guide the wheel, we provide check rails here opposite to the crossing on both sides and the gap between this check rail and the lead rail is kept equal to or slightly more than the width of the wheel flange so that the outer wheel does not climb on the crossing. Now this is the facing direction of the turnout. If you stand at the point and look towards crossing, it is the facing direction and if you stand at the crossing and look towards the point it is called the trailing direction. This is the stretcher bar and it is used to pull the switch rail either in this direction or in this direction. So when you pull it in this direction then a gap comes here between this tongue rail and this stock rail. And this part of the tongue rail will fit closely with the stock rail here and train is taken to the diverting track. When you pull this stretcher bar in this direction then this will closely fit with the stock rail here and a gap comes between this stock rail and the tongue rail and train is taken on the straight alignment. That is how a turnout works. These are the details of a switch. A switch consists of or a pair of switch consists of a pair of a stock rail. This is one stock rail, this is second stock rail. A pair of tongue rails or switch rail. This is one switch rail and this is another switch rail. Switch rail moves to provide the gap. Then a pair of heel block. These switch rails or tongue rails, they are hinged at the heel block. Slide shears. Now these slide shears are provided so that this tongue rail can move freely on these slide shears. Then it has a stretcher bar and stretcher bar is used to move the tongue rail depending upon whether the train is to be taken on the main line or on the branch line. And a gauge tie plate here so that a cage is maintained properly. Now this is what we call the top of the switch where 
the toe where the point starts and that is heel of the switch that is the heel of the switch and is the length of the tongue rail now when you pull the stretcher bar in this direction then a gap comes here between the tongue rail and the stock rail and this tongue rail will closely fit with the stock rail so the train is taken to this line now that is your branch line and when you pull it in this side so it becomes the position now a gap comes here and this gap is completely closed so the train is taken to the main line that is how these points and crossing work and that is the crossing crossing here where two rails cross each other with a gap and that gap is to be crossed by the wheel flange that is how it works in one position you have a gap here so it is taken on the main line when this gap is closed a gap is created here it is taken on the branch line that is how a tongue rail and a stock rail look like in a turnout now this is the heel of the switch this is the toe of the switch and that is the length of the tongue rail now this tongue rail may be either straight or it may be curved tongue rails are easy to manufacture and can be used for right hand turnout and left hand turnout but a sudden jerk is experienced by the train while negotiating this turnout because of sudden change in alignment at the heel of the switch straight tongue rails are normally adopted for one in eight and a half and one in 12 turnouts and these turnouts are generally used for low speeds and in yards or maybe on unimportant lines curved tongue rails are curved to the curvature of the turnout from their toe to the heel of the switch the curved tongue rails give a smooth entry to the train and curved switches are normally adopted for 1 in 16 and 1 in 20 turnouts the length of tongue rail is from its toe to the heel and it depends upon the width of the gauge and angle of the switch now angle of the switch is this angle which is made by the tongue rail at the heel of the switch when it is completely opened now this angle between the tongue rail and the stock rail at heel of the switch is called the switch angle beta longer the length of the tongue rail the lesser will be the angle of the switch at the heel divergence and smoother will be the entry the longer length of the tongue rail will however occupy more space in the layout and it is particularly important when a number of turnouts are laid in a limited space the length of the tongue rail which is adopted on Indian railways for different number of turnouts and for different gauges are like this for one in eight and a half straight tongue rail one in 12 straight tongue rail or one in 12 curved tongue rails in case of turnout of one in 16 and one in 20 curved rails are only used and these are the length of the tongue rail in millimeter for broad gaze and meter gaze in case of meter gaze one in 16 and one in 20 turnouts are not generally used and therefore these lengths are not specified here now at the heel of the switch two rails here are laid side by side and one is the tongue rail other is a stock rail and if you look at the cross section of these two rails it looks like this this is the stock rail and this is the tongue rail at the heel and the clear spacing between these two that is called the flange way clearance now this is the clearance provided for movement of the flange of the wheel and that is why it is called flange way clearance and its value for broad gauge line is 44 millimeter to 48 millimeter and for meter gauge line it is 41 to 44 millimeter and the flange way clearance plus rail top width of stock rail that is called the heel divergence heel clearance or heel divergence so heel divergence is flange way clearance plus top rail top width of the stock rail now these are important dimensions when you design a turnout 
This is the crossing. Crossing is also called a frock. And this is the device which is introduced at the point where two gauge face cross each other to permit the flange of a railway vehicle to pass from one track to another. There are two rails are there. One is called point rail, another is called splice rail. And these two rails are machined to form a nose here. The point rail ends at the nose, whereas the splice rail joins it a little behind the nose. Theoretically, the point rail should end in a point and be made as thin as possible, but such a knife edge of the point rail would break off under the load. And therefore, the point rail has its fine and slightly cut off to form a blunt nose here. And thickness of this blunt nose is around 6 millimeter. The top of the blunt nose is called the actual nose of crossing A and C. Now this toe here, that is called actual nose of crossing. But when you extend the gaze faces of point rail and splice rail to meet at a point here, revisionary point, that is called theoretical nose of crossing. And all calculations in the design of turnouts are made from theoretical nose of crossing. This is the throat of the crossing and the distance between this throat and the A and C that is actual nose of crossing is called the gap. Angle between gauge faces of splice rail and the point rail is called the crossing angle alpha. Two wing rails are provided here. Both of them flare outside. That is how a crossing looks like in the field. You have a point rail here, you have a splice rail here and these two meet at a point that is called the nose of crossing. This is the throat of the crossing and that is the wing rail which is flared outside. And opposite to this crossing we provide a check rail here and a check rail here. A crossing may be of any of these three types acute angle crossing or we can also say V crossing because here a V is formed. This is the crossing in which the intersection of two gauge faces forms an acute angle. For example, when a right rail crosses a left rail, it makes an acute angle crossing. The another one is optus angle or diamond crossing. Now this is the optus angle crossing. This is the V crossing or acute angle crossing. In case of an optus angle crossing, two gauge faces meet at an optus angle. When a right rail or a left rail crosses a similar rail, means left rail crosses a left rail, then an optus angle crossing is formed. And third is a square crossing. A square crossing is when two tracks cross each other at exactly at 90 degrees. These types of crossings are rarely used in actual practice. Now, from manufacturing point of view, a crossing may be a built-up crossing. In built-up crossing, two wing rails and a V section consisting of a splice rail and a point rail, they are assembled together by means of bolts and distance block to form a crossing. Now, this type of crossing is commonly used on Indian railways. Advantage of such crossings is that their initial cost is low and their repair can be carried out simply by welding or replacing each constituent separately. A crossing becomes unserviceable when wear is more than 10 mm. However, these crossings lack in rigidity. The bolts require frequent checking and sometimes break under fast and heavy traffic. Improvement to this is cast steel crossing. This is a one piece crossing with no bolts and therefore requiring very little maintenance. As compared to built up crossing, it is more rigid since it consists of one complete mass. The initial cost of such crossing is however very high and its repair and maintenance pose a number of problems. Recently, Cast manganese steel crossing or CMS crossing 
which have longer life have also been adopted on Indian railways. Now, due to increase in traffic and use of heavy axle load, the ordinary built up crossing or cast steel crossing, they are not found to perform very well. They are subjected to heavy wear and tear, especially on fast lines and suburban sections with electric vehicles. And the life of these type road crossings varies from six months to two years, depending upon their location and the service condition. CMS crossing. CMS here stands for cast manganese steel. Now these crossings are found to have higher strength. They offer more resistance to wear and consequently have longer life. The major advantages of using these CMS crossings are less wear and tear. They have longer life. The average life of CMS crossing is about four times more than that of an ordinary built up crossing. And CMS crossings are free from bolts as well as other components that normally tend to get loose as a result of movement of traffic. And therefore, these crossings have been more or less standardized on internal railways. Turnout is designated by a number or by angle of crossing alpha. 1 in n or by angle alpha. By number it can be 1 in 8.5, 1 in 12, 1 in 16, 1 in 20. And it all depends upon the permiss permissible speed on the turnout or the importance of the turnout. As a thumb rule, permissible speed in miles per hour is kept less than twice the number of crossing. And therefore, a speed over a 1 in 12 turnout should normally be kept below 25 miles per hour or 40 km per hour. There is a strong correlation between alpha and the number of crossing. And there are three methods of relating this n with alpha. One is right angle method, the second is center line method, and third is isosceles triangle method. In case of right angle method, n is given by cot alpha. In case of center line method, it is n is equal to half cot alpha by 2. And in case of isosceles triangle method, it is half cosec alpha by 2 because alpha is very small and therefore these three do not give much different results and on Indian railways this is used n is equal to cot alpha is used as a correlation between number of crossing and angle of crossing n is equal to cot alpha. So that is all about today's session. Thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions in the comment box.